God bless you tonight. Come on, like and share, like and share this. Please share this tonight. Let's get these numbers up. Like and share this. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother young blood. God bless you, Apostle Hopkins. God bless you, leading lady. Certainly on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand. Praise God. God bless you. My cousin Rhonda is on, on. God bless you. Rhonda Marie. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord bless and keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his peace. We praise God for another glorious opportunity to come into your homes, your automobiles, or wherever you're kind enough to tune in this religious service of worship. We bring you greetings from the Mount Calvary Community Church. We are the biggest little church in Omaha, Nebraska, and we are deliciously delighted to be with you again for another installment of Word on Wednesday. We are in our Lenten season, and we were talking last week. God bless you, Sharina. Amen. God bless you, my Aunt Georgia May. Good God from glory. Amen. We're so glad to have you all worshiping with us on tonight. Amen. We are in our Lenten season, and we were talking last week about, uh, I think I left off in that Pauline called in my abortion. When she texted me, she said, thank you for the abortion lesson on tonight. And I don't know if it was really called that, but uh, we, we praise God um, for what it is. Um, but in, the dis in that discourse, we were talking about changing the way we think. And so I wanted to kind of come in on the, the end of that um, in this season. But before we proceed, this is the year of recovery. Uh, public service announcement, the best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to COVID-19. So please clean your hands often with soap and water for 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer often uh, with at least 60% alcohol. Please avoid close contact with people who are sick. Maintain a six foot social distance between you and others. Cover your nose, your mouth with a mask when you are around others. Again, remember, wash your hands, wear a mask, maintain your social distance. If you are in the Douglas County, uh, this is Douglas County, Nebraska, uh, and you want to be informed about vaccine availability, there are more places I'm understanding being uh, released to hold or to host uh, vaccinations. Uh, please visit www.douglascountyhealth.com, www.douglascountyhealth.com. Look for the button on their homepage that says COVID-19 vaccine sign up list. And as I have often said from this platform, uh, putting your name on the list only confirms that you will be informed when the vaccine is available. It is not an appointment for vaccination. Again, putting your name on the list only informs you when the vaccine is available. Putting your name there is not a confirmation. It is not an appointment for your vaccination. Amen. I want to put emphasis on that so you're not led astray or confused. There's so much misinformation, and I want to make sure I give you the best information that I have available. Amen. So please, please, please uh, adhere to that. And um, uh, Bishop, should I be vaccinated? This we, we belong to the spiritual church. That means we are a conscious church. And I want you to be led by your conscience. I'm not pro or anti-vaccination, but I will tell you as your servant leader, I will get vaccinated. So that's that. That's not political. I'm just telling you about what I'm doing. But don't do not do my mama used to always say about me and my, my friends, if they jumped off the Sears Tower, you going to jump with them? Well, no. So don't do. <laughs> uh, just, you know. Anyway, follow your mind and be persuaded by your own mind. Amen. We praise God. We praise God. We praise God. Amen. Uh, and also, before I forget, 
Uh, we are the biggest little church in Omaha, and we bring you these services by faith. And I want you to consider sowing a seed of faith uh, today. You can go to our website, www.m3comaha.org, www.m3c.org. You can go to our cash app, dollar sign M3C5112. That's dollar sign m 3 c 5112 or if you're old fashioned you can go to your checkbook make your checks or money orders check cashiers checks payable to the Mount Calvary Community Church 5112 Ames Avenue Omaha Nebraska 68104 5112 Ames Avenue Omaha Nebraska 68104 God bless you Anita Bass God bless you Carol Gunn we praise God for you. God bless you, Sister Bessie. We praise God. Amen for you. Come on, let's like and share this. Come on, right now. Everybody just click share. Click like, love, or then I want you to jump to the, the right-hand side and click share. Click that share button. I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, 1,000, two, one. Everybody had time. Five seconds to share. If you need five more seconds, come on, let's get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get these numbers up. Please share this. Please share this on your timeline. That way others will know that we are on the air. Amen? Amen. So again, we are in our Lent season. We were talking, uh, uh, I think the discourse began, uh, you know, what if you can take a pill? Uh, and... Uh, like the next day uh, after you've sinned, whatever that sin is, and that pill would eradicate from you um, the sin that you had just performed. Um, there's a phrase, it's not Bible, but I've coined it, um, and and it, help, it helps me, and I just like to be real with, with the people of God. I don't like to be so spiritual and so deep that I'm no earthly good for you. Um, when I know I'm about to sin, because see, there's there are sins of omission, and then there are sins of commission. Sins of commission are those sins that you've done but you were not aware of, and then there are sins of omission. You you did it, and you need to repent. When I know I'm about to sin, what I do, I prepent. That's prepent. I Lord, I know I ain't got no business doing this, but I'm on my way. And yes, so I'm just telling you about me. I walk with him in such a way, I'm talking to him. And chances are when I'm on my way to do what I think I'm going to do, he steps in and fixes it where I have not had to do what I thought I was going to do anyway. But I will prepent before I do what I thought I was going to do. Um, because I understand the process of repentance and a lot of us walk around in 2021 unrepentant we've done things we've said things we've talked about people we've made fun of people we've done all sorts of things not just outwardly then we've done things inwardly to our own selves and we have this this air about ourselves that we are above everything and everybody and we don't have space or we don't have the wherewithal. We don't need to repent. When the pastor's talking about repentance, he's talking about himself or he's talking about everybody else, but he's not talking about me. Yes, you who just thought that, you are the very one who <laughs> need to pre-pent, repent, and repent again. <laughs> and say, Lord, just go back over my whole Go back from the beginning of my life, even when I was in, you know, when I first came out the womb, just go back and cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Uh, because there are some things in you that has to come out of you. And I'm here to help you get through those things so that you can abort the fetus that you've been nurturing all of these years in your spirit, man. And the idea that you have stuff in you comes sometimes from what you think about. Sometimes we have things that are in us 
that are in our minds. And this is why Paul, I believe, said to us, it is important to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. Now, uh, thoughts are things. They taught us this in the old spiritual church. Thoughts are things, whether, and words are things. Words are, are things. Words, thoughts are things. Whether they are, uh, thoughts are written down, you've thought it, you've journaled it, whether they are spoken, or you've just had it in your, in your vortex, you've had it in your mind. Uh, they are things. Um, and so you have to then master the thought process that you have, and I, I alluded, I believe last week, I, I quoted uh, uh, from Father Charles G. Hayes, the founding pastor of the Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer in Chicago. He, he taught for years. He had this one particular quote, if you change your attitude, and I want to just take that and just change that word attitude to thinking. If you change your thinking, you, beloved, can change your whole life. Thoughts are secrets behind smiles. Everybody that's smiling at you ain't happy for you. If you change your attitude. Uh-oh, I'm hearing myself. I want to just take that and just change that word attitude to thinking. If you change your thinking. Where am I coming from? All right. There we go. I'm getting a repeat of myself. Maybe I need to hear that. Um, everybody that's smiling mm -hmm. at you ain't happy about you. Um, they're not happy for you. They smile, and then they have thoughts about you behind the smile. Are you with me? As my pastor said, are you tracking with me? Uh, uh, thoughts are are private uh, a private world that that other people cannot invade because I don't know what you're thinking and none of us will be comfortable truth be told if there was a register on your forehead, a monitor, if you will, showing us what's in your mind. You would put a, a hat on, a skull cap, a, 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 a bob wig to cover so we wouldn't see the marquee, that's the word, of what you're thinking. None of us would be comfortable if the person sitting across the table from you could audibly hear the thoughts that are in your in your mind. Yet our thoughts can um, they can forecast success. They can forecast failure. As a man thinketh, I'm in the Bible, so is he. No one can hear God think, but we feel the effects of his thoughts toward us. You with me? And so like our creator, God, we affect other people by our thoughts towards them. I said this, I believe, last week from, from my, my home church pastor. It makes no difference what you think about me. But it does make a difference what I think about you. Let's go to Jeremiah, just real quick. I want to hit two, two passages of scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11, and Psalm 139, 17. Uh, just real quick. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. 
thoughts of peace, right? And not of evil. To do what? To give you an expected end. Psalms 139, 17 just says real simply, How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God, and how great is the sum of them. So stinking thinking, again, we talked about uh, is the stench that came uh, when Lazarus was in, the, was in the tomb. He was dead. It was the result of an interaction with dead things. And then once the body came forth out of the grave, the odor that, you know, because when, when, when Jesus said, Lord, uh, Mary, Martha, show me, show me where you laid him. Are, are you sure that you want to go up there? He's been dead a few days. Surely by now he's stinking. And this is what happened with your thought process. Your thoughts have an odor about them. Your thoughts are, are, are odoriferous. And so the question that you have to ask yourself is the odor that's emitting from my thoughts, is it a fragrance of beauty or is it funky? I'm sorry, I didn't know a better word right there. Does my thoughts stink? When I think my thoughts what do people feel or smell from me? My, 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 my wife and my mother has often said, and my mother is, is, is true to this herself, uh, we wear our feelings on our face. So if you want to know sometimes what I'm thinking, just look at how I'm looking. <laughs> it is what it is. It's so deep that we were in the market, my wife and I, yesterday, and I had the mask on, so all you could see was this, and she asked me one simple question. I just gave one look, and she just changed the whole discourse, and I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. You can tell all what I'm thinking just by looking right here? Then what did it smell like? The question was one thing, but the answer that was in my head I don't know what it's what what did it smell like to my wife? It must have been very odoriferous and funky because she changed the nature of the question and handled the situation herself. And some of us need to, you know how we let me go clear my mind. Some of us need to go on a long walk. Let's take a long walk. Is that Jill Scott? Something. You need to go for a long walk around the park, the dark, or whatever them lyrics are, and clear, <laughs> clear your mind. And clear your mind until the fragrance changes. Until your thoughts smell like frankincense and myrrh. Until your thoughts smell like a can of Febreze or Fabuloso or whatever you like to smell. Lavender, vanilla. And you know how bad your thoughts are because they are tearing you up on the inside. If truth be told, you would be freer in your spirit if you would just change how you think about situations. Mm, here they come. Those are bad thoughts. Everything you think about that person is, mm -hmm, here, here she come again. Oh, wife stealing. Well, if you took care of your husband yourself, he wouldn't have been stolen. I'm sorry. If you'd have, if you, if you'd have did what you needed to do, Because somebody was looking at him. You thought you had that thing on lock. You better be careful. Because there's somebody who said, well, if you, don't, if you don't cook, I'll do it. If you don't clean, I'll do it. Everybody ain't Cardi B. 
We know how she got her ring. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You need to go on a walk and clean out your thought process. And I believe, I believe when we as the church and Christians, those who I'm, I'm talking about these real Christians, not, not Christian cops, not folks who go to church. Let me ask the question that I used to ask all the time. If you were arrested for being a Christian, would you be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law? Or would you be let go because there was no evidence to prove and substantiate that you were ever a Christian at all? So to the real Christian that would be prosecuted because there was significant and profound evidence that you emphatically are a Christian. You are walking after the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about you. If those Christians, when, when your, your preaching, your, your prayer life, your romantic life, come on, talk to me, your home life, would be different if you just change how you think. You have to decide, how do I want to smell? You have to decide whether or not you want to go up there and clean them cobwebs out. And get rid of every dead thing that is in your inner being. Are you with me? Now, we were talking about abortions. Um, and I want to be clear because there, there, there is a difference between psychological and biological. And I'm not trying to be political. Uh, I am a private citizen. And as a private citizen, I believe you ought to do with your own body what you want to do with your own body. I'm against abortion. But if that's what you decide to do, my whole, my whole approach to life today is I got to go see Jesus for myself. And whether or not an abortion would prevent you from seeing him, that's between you and God. Then, Bishop, what is your position? My position is found in Scripture. Let the wheat and the tear grow together. And in the end, he said, I'll separate. I said last week, sin, then, is that thing that separates you from God. But it does not separate God from you. So when I'm talking about abortion, and, you know, it's a touchy subject, it's a political thing, I'm not really getting into that, but, you know, my, my, an abortion, uh, anyway, I, I'm talking about aborting psychological offspring. I'm not talking about physical, biological abortion. I'm talking about that nature that's in you, in your psychology, in your psyche. That thing that you've been carrying around in your spiritual womb, you need to have an abortion, and thereby is your deliverance. And, Lord have mercy, I wish I had a spiritual church tonight. You, beloved, need to be delivered. My, my grandma would always say that. That was her answer for everything. You just need to be delivered. You need deliverance. <laughs> And she was tongue-tied. And when she was saying deliver, she, she was saying deliverance. You need to be deliverance. You need to be free in your mind, free in your spirit, free in your emotions. A lot of us are walking around discombobulated and carry, carrying around burdens that God never intended for us to carry. So again, I'm not talking about a, 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 a biological abortion. Uh, I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about that every, that, that every psychological embryo that you've been carrying around in the womb of your mind 
every remaining embryo that is tied to dead issues and dead tissue can be and it must be aborted. Lord, I love you. 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 You, 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 you don't have to leave uh, 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 all this gross, gruesome stuff in your spirit. God has given you power over every foul spirit, every enemy. And this power is not rejoicing power. It is not power to sing or to preach. It's not power over people and external dilemmas. He has given you the power to abort the seeds of failure, the seeds of malice, the seeds of discord, the seeds of fear, False evidence appearing real. God have not given us the spirit of fear. Come on here. But but power, love, and what? A sound mind. Hey, shut up. Hold So abortion, yes, it's a strong term, but it's, it's effective, I believe, in, in, in this wise. So pull down those strongholds. Pull down those things that have taken strongholds in your life. And if you don't pull them down, if you're not careful, beloved, they're going to pull you down. And you don't understand how far their reach is if you don't get control and master this thing that's inside of you. How in the hell you gonna let something inside of you control you? No, baby, that's not what they, that's not what they taught us. I am a master. Who made you a master, Kevin? God made me a master. Therefore, nothing outside of me will I allow to control the power that's within me. Likewise, nothing inside of me will control what's on the outside of me. I'm in charge of this thing with God on my side. I feel like running. Ooh. And I just thought of it. Pull down, casting down imaginations. Because if you don't cast them down, they'll cast you down and knock you over. These things that you've been carrying need to understand that it's time for them to relinquish their hope on you. Well, Bishop, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't lost track. I've lost time. Hope thou in God right now. That's if you if you lost hope. All I can tell you right now on on December the twenty fourth at uh, uh, seven thirty three Central Standard Time. Hope thou in God and ask Him to give you the ability to to. To have the will enough and have the strength enough and have the power enough to stop every unborn spiritual embryo that's been, that's been tearing you up on the inside. God, help me to get it out of my life. I don't need it to manifest. I don't need it to grow. I don't need this to be birthed. And, 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 and so some of y'all, you know, when, when, when people, uh, 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 you real cautious and patient with people and then there's always that place where you it builds up you've been nice you've been patient you've been nice and you've been patient and you've been nice and you've been patient and then all of a sudden you started it started boiling you've been you, you ever seen a pressure cooker and baby if you ain't careful the lid blows off you don't want what's in you to finally be birthed and a lot of us have been carrying around years, years, centuries, and decades of, 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 of resentment. Years of, of degradation. You've been carrying around burdens of heartache. You can't love people because you're you afraid that the next one going to walk out like the last one. 
Well, everybody ain't cut the same way. You got to learn how to love again, but then you, you know, first love yourself. Do, do you love, do you love you? Stop asking folk what I, what they think about you. It makes no difference what you think about me. It does make a difference what I think about you. God, if you hope in him, he will do it. Let's go 2 Corinthians chapter 10. God bless you, <laughs> Patricia Mars. God bless you, Minister Beth Ann. 2 Corinthians 2. Uh, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The NRA can't help you with this. But mighty... Through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought, I'm here we talk about these thoughts again, unto the obedience of Christ. So these, these thoughts, these wounds, these, these emotions, these trials and tribulations, these odd things that you're going through, watch, if you're not careful, they are self-exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. What you know about Jesus? He's all right. And if God is all right and you know that, and you know for a fact that you know that you know that you do know that you know that he's all right. If you know that, that God is my very present help in the time of trouble, if you know that he's on my side no matter what comes my way, then you cannot allow anything to exalt itself against what you know about him. <laughs> oh, shut up about how you you cannot allow that nature that's in you to blow itself up against what you know about God. He's a mighty good, hey, yeah, shut up, oh, he's a mighty good leader. Yes, he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what you know about, what, what do you, what do you know about him? He's a deliverer. That's what I know. He's a keeper. Hallelujah. What, you, what do you know about the Lord? And then how in the hell do you allow what you know about him to be uh, 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 cast down by what's growing on the inside of you? How you feel? How you looking like that? These things that are in you, they're trying to control and manipulate you. You cannot afford to submit your future to what's growing on the inside of you that's not, that's not uh, helping you grow. It's helping you slowly diminish. I think I said you, you're walking around dead. You in church, you're beating tambourines, but you dead. You jump around and, 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 and speak in tongues, but you dead. You got to have freedom and then you need to have the freedom and the liberty in him to be free in your mind. Lord, I love you. I hear you, granddaddy. That was a song he used to sing. In the Temple of St. Jude, it's in my mind. There's a heaven created in my mind. <laughs> what are you creating in your mind? You got to be free. Be free. You got to be free in your mind. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. You got to be free. Be free in your mind. He was running all songs together and we were just clapping like, but he was saying something. You, beloved. Let me... Let me borrow uh, this real quick because it's in my spirit from Bishop Jewel Granberry. You 
need to repent. <laughs> That's how she talked. You need to repent. This Bible that I read, it says you got to repent. You have to cast it down. You got to repent. Bishop, what is repentance? I'm glad you asked. Repentance is when your mind decides, uh-uh, not no more. Mm -mm, I can't do this no more. That's repentance. When your mind decides to have a mutiny or a coup d'etat against the imaginations that's in your brain, in your mind, and overthrow the government that's inside of you, that's repentance. Repentance is an is a insurrection coming against, bamming on the door, breaking the windows, while you inside the Capitol. It's going to come in and tear up everything. Until what's inside. Has to flee. Until the Secret Service got to carry away your old imagination. And bring a flag in and says, I'm back. That's repentance. I'm sorry, that's. I'm thinking about the news. That's the best way I can describe it right here, right, right up and through here. Without signing so without signing so deep and spiritual. You you've been watching the news. If you if you want to have true repentance, you need to have an insurrection just like they did on January 6th and tear up everything. And no matter what's gonna happen, and get all of the sin nature that's in your life out of your life. And as long as these other things are reigning and sit at the seat of government in your life, controlling your ins and your outs, your ups and your downs, then Christ does not have a seat in your life. There's no room for him. But if you, beloved, will just give over to him, he can have a seat in your life. And, and not just have a seat in your life, but he'll take up residence with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I hear that song. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Oh, God. And the joy that we share while we tarry there, none other has ever, ever known. I want him to sit in my life. I need him to sit and, and take uh, control to, to, to rule and to super rule. I need him to sit on the throne of my heart. And as long as he's on the throne and then uh, he's no longer on the cross, Putting him on, on the throne is putting him past the cross. He came off the cross. He was put in a tomb. But on the third day, he got up. Now he got up. But where is he now in your life? Now that he's up. Well, for me, he's on the throne of my heart. Now that he's up. I, 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 can, I can no longer allow my sin nature to crucify him afresh. No, I need him to have a seat on the throne of my heart. In, in God bless you, Othello Broder, new listener. We, we, we praise God for you. In, in these moments... When thankful hearts and hands lifted, uh, are lifted in, in praise, uh, come into corporate levels of, of expression uh, with memories of what could have happened had God not intervened. If there anybody listening to me that's ever can can just testify, I was I was a mess, I was a, a wreck, but God. I was going to lose my mind. I was going to lose my house. I was going to lose my spouse. But God. I, 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 I was going to lose everything I thought I had. 
had or, or, or worked for or, or could imagine, but God intervened. That's where your real ministry is. What, what, what is my place in, in the Lord? Your place right now, beloved, is to repent. Turn from your wicked ways. That's, that, that's, that's your ministry gift right now. Because if you and, and everybody else is watching me and those who, who will listen to the replay later, if all of us took just, just the time to repent of our sins, how much better would our one church be? If we could actually come to church and embrace each other and greet each other with a holy kiss and not be uh, uh, second guessing, what were they, what they, what they kissing on me for? What they hugging me for? If we could just honestly come together and worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, how much more wonderful would our worship experience be if we all came together and just repented of our sins and asked God to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. And, uh, I'm, I'm Bishop Jack. God don't care about bishop. He don't care about no apostles and, and prophets and heal. All this stuff don't mean nothing to God. That paper that say what I am don't mean nothing. To, don't, I hear you, grandma. It don't mean Nathan to him. If you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, Feed my sheep. I, I can't repent. I'm a, I'm a trustee. And y'all ain't even in the Bible. <laughs> I, I can't repent. I'm a missionary. What foreign country have you gone to, missionary? We can't get you to go across the street and give Sister Doohickey a... a, a, a a fruit basket. You a missionary. Where at? I'm lifting holy hands. Your hands ain't too holy. When you sit in judgment of your brothers and your sisters. Your, your fragrance is not a fragrance of beauty. But you, you smell, you, you stink. Your thinking is thinking. And so instead of having holy hands, you got calluses and, 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 and bruises all on your hand. Not because you was doing the work of the ministry, but because you refuse to repent. You refuse to give unto him that what he's asked of you. You refuse. You, you, you know help to us spiritually. You know help to, some, to us physically. You walk around with a chip on your shoulder and dare the ushers to knock it off. You, you dare the church mothers to say something to you. What she mean my skirt too short? She meant your skirt was too short. <laughs> That's what she meant. <sighs> Now, when, when, you, when you talk about the, the young lady that's skirts are short, now, do you have a plan of action to get us some skirts? Let's, can we, are y'all tracking with me? How did you say it to her? Or are you jealous that she looked better in a skirt than you do? I done lost my amens. I done lost two viewers. The intensity of our praise should be born out of our memories. Not so much of our past, but of his mercies towards us. So the issue then is not whether we remember, but how we choose to remember what we've gone through. 
I need to tell to you tonight, 10 minutes to 8, that God is able. He, he, he's, he's well able to take the sting out of your memories and still leave the sweet taste of victory in place for you. And so when that happens, we are, we are enriched by our struggles. We have not been limited by them. Woe be unto you preachers and teachers of the gospel tonight who try to have fresh worship experience while constantly reliving dead issues of the past. In that case, Reverend, memories become an obstacle around your neck. It is no longer the collar that you wear. The collar is your yoke. But when you keep bringing up the past in your delivery, it becomes an obstacle for you. And he wants you to lift up your head and be blessed in the presence of him that sent you, that have called you. And there is nothing as is, is, is important as ministering the word of the Lord unto his people. And a lot of us, even in ministry, we have stinking thinking in the pulpit. We preach from a judgmental perspective. We teach from a judgmental perspective. We go down the list on all of the sin that everybody else is doing or what you perceive that they are doing while you don't discuss your own sin nature while you're preaching or while you're teaching. You call that homosexuality, but you won't call out homongering. You'll call out drinking, but you won't call out smoking. You need to change your thinking. What would it matter if all of the voices in the world, in the earth right now, to harmoniously go into a praise and, and, and adoration and commending you for your contributions. If God didn't approve. What would it mean if everybody, hear me, in the entire world, Jews, Greeks, Gentiles, whatever, Asians, and they all sung your praise and said, oh, you've done such a wonderful, marvelous thing. Yet the very thing that they are praising you for, God never approved of. Then, when you reach new levels in worship, we wouldn't be able to touch dead things. Instead, these dead things would become an obstacle that would hinder us from having that deeper relationship and that deeper experience in him. So, in other words, uh, you know, we have a, what's called an order of service, or an, 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 in other words, an, a, a liturgy. You, beloved, need to change your liturgy. Before you can open up your service with Habakkuk 2, but the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him right before that should ever take place, your mindset should be changed. What's wrong with the church? We walk around carrying thoughts, carrying burdens, carrying situations that we should have never had in us to begin with. So what they talked about you. So what they mocked you. 
So what? They did it to Jesus. You and I have to change the way we think. Thereby change the way we respond. Ooh, Lord, I just said something. Because every situation does not demand a response from you. But you've got to change the way you think about it. My wife says it often. And it's part of that whole delivery. Taste your words. In that process of tasting your words, you're allowing your thinking to grab hold to your tongue before you release a vicious bow spirit out of your lips that could thereby hurt and kill and destroy the person that it was intended to be received unto. And until you change the way you think, you cannot change the way you, what you speak. Then that's why they taught us the words that I speak, and I'm done, are my law of good. They will produce the desired results because they are operated on a power greater than I am. Greater is he, hey, glory, that is in me than he that is in the world. Good alone goes from me, thereby good is the only thing that can return to me. The world calls it karma. The Bible calls it sowing and reaping. Beloved, you will reap what you sow. Change how you think. And watch your harvest grow and multiply and be blessings and a blessing to you and leave an inheritance for your family. May God bless and keep you. May heaven smile upon you, be gracious unto you and give you his peace. I'm not out of word. I am out of time. We want to talk, I think, next week about dead bodies. Lord, just pray for your pastor. We got to talk about this dead situation in this Lenten season so we can get towards the resurrection. Amen. I need as many as can and will tonight to believe God and sow a seed on this 24th day of February. I'm believing as many as all of you could sow a $24 seed tonight. Go to your cash app, dollar sign M3C5112. If you're sowing the seed, could you let us know that you're sowing? I'm not trying to count. I just want to believe God for those of you who are watching us on tonight. A $24 seed, dollar sign M3C5112, dollar sign M3C5112. On our cash app, go to our website, www.m3comaha.org, www.m3c.org. Please, I need as many as can and will to believe God for a $24 uh, offering on tonight. Amen. We praise God for you, for you, and for you. Please, please, please do that. Don't forget to come in uh, this Saturday for our children's church, 4 o'clock p.m., 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, for children's church on Zoom and Facebook Live in our uh, youth Facebook group. 1015 Sunday morning will be Sunday school, Cyber Sunday school. There's a great lesson prepared for you in our Sunday school, and then at 11 o'clock, uh, the Lord says the same. Uh, we will we will share what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. We uh, believe God for you, for you, for you, for you, and for you. If Brother Young Blood is on, I've been meaning uh, Brother Young Blood to to get this out to you. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I, I saw you the other week. The Lord showed me. Uh, we were in a church service, and we were in, it looked like Mount Calvary, but when I turned around, we were in another church altogether. But uh, if you're there, I don't know if you're even still on, uh, but we were there, and, and I laid hands on you, uh, Brother Youngblood. And when I laid hands on you, uh, you took off running. You began to shout and to praise God. And the Lord would say to me to say to you that there's a, there's a, re there's a rejoicing that's coming for you. 
uh, 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 and it won't be it won't be that many days hence. There's a rejoicing that I see you that God's going to restore and bring a rejoicing your way. I don't know what this is that I'm that I saw for you, but I did see you rejoicing and praising God in a dance. Now, I don't even know if you used to dance at all in the church, but I saw you. I saw you praising God and giving God the praise and giving God the glory. And I just want to uh, speak that into your life. I pray that uh, the Lord will, will go before you, make safe, easy, and bring success your way. God bless you, Sister Tony. God bless you, uh, Nita. God bless you, Sister Ware. Praise God. Hope you're feeling better down in Florida. We praise God for you, for you, for you. God bless you, Rhonda Marie. Amen. Again, I need as many as can to sow a seed, $24 in our cash app, dollar sign M3C5112, or go to our website, www.m3comaha.o. R G. God bless you, Sister Carol. Amen. We praise God. We praise God. Until next time, we decree and declare, all is well. Thank you.